Hey folks and welcome back to another one of my videos. I'm Brendan from Blue Light and over the past several years I've been coaching and supporting people for the police recruitment process. A little bit of blurb down there about how to access those services and how to access my Facebook support group that's now got over 6,200 members as of April 19. So here we are in York, welcome to York, where today I've been doing some coaching for someone who's preparing for their final interview for the Nottinghamshire Constabulary. But equally, what we looked at today could apply to any constabulary. Um, one of the things that we looked at, among many things, was one of the biggest challenges to the police currently. Now, a lot of people would perhaps give the answer of austerity, cybercrime, changing forms of crime, vulnerability, harm, where that threat of harm is coming from. Um, I think it's all equally valid. But I think one of the biggest problems is the challenge of connectedness. So I'm going to do a very quick run through here of some of the things that we discussed in a lot more depth. And this is based on a lot of the work I do outside the police recruitment. So as a practitioner in Greater Manchester Police, I was doing this kind of work well over a decade ago, only to have senior officers scratching their head at me thinking, what's he doing now? Fortunately, I had a chief constable who's way behind the sort of work I was doing. Uh, so think less public servant and more citizen enabler. So I was tackling organized crime syndicates and uh, destroying their ability to commit crime, which left a vacuum in the community, where the illegitimate leaders were suddenly being removed, which left a vacuum. Now, if I didn't fill that vacuum with strong, cohesive community, it would just get filled by other up-and-coming OCG. So we'd have the same problem in five years' time that we had today. We wouldn't have actually prevented anything. <clears throat> so, linking in with that, and uh, a lot of the vulnerability, vulnerability issues that we're facing today as a, as a society, Bishop Desmond Tutu said several years ago, it's time something along the lines of it's time to stop pulling people out of the river. We need to get upstream and find out why they're falling in and prevent it. So as our response team stopping people from flowing further down the river, river I've met the people who are who flowed further down the river, river in the past and have been dead. And I'm not being flippant there. You know, I've had to bust the door down to find someone who's got syringe sticking out of his arm, who's been there for about three weeks, rotting away. Um, and he died alone from a heroin overdose and his life had become so messed up that that's how it ended up. If we don't pull them out of the river, they die. So uh, a lot of forces now are doing exactly that. They've got teams, so things like multi-agency safeguarding um, teams, the mashes, are doing work around uh, finding out why individuals and families are falling in the river and then preventing them. And I think that work's needed. They are doing stop and they're stopping it and they're doing a fab job. It's hugely resource intensive. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think we need to go one step further. So I think we need to have the people who are pulling people out the river and have the people who are doing the prevention work. But more than that, we need to recognise that everyone who falls in the river comes from a town, a village, a place, a neighbourhood, a city. So we need to find a path now to the metaphorical village, town or city the people falling in come from. And once there, enable them to become such a strong, co cohesive place, community, that they never feel the need to go to the river's edge in the first place. So we don't need to pull them out. They're so happy there, they never need to go to the river's edge to fall in. Uh, whose quote is that? It's mine. It's Brendan's. Uh, so this is the sort of work I've been doing now for over a decade with um, police forces, as I said, right across the country in my own home force. So what's this about? It's a challenge of connectedness. Um, connecting people, as one of my clients did before, <coughs> from a community centre to a good wara. Um, I won't go into the long story, but she managed to secure the final interview based on that research that she did. Um, all of these black dots here are all assets in the community. They're all people who care enough to act, who are capable and competent. And this is the kind of patchwork quilt, this messy quilt of their lines of communication. Now this is all community, uh, sort of social capital theory, uh, community organising. Uh, Barack Obama used this really well to get elected uh, all those years ago as the President of the United States. He was a brilliant community organiser. So using here theories around motivational interviewing, asset-based community development, the priesthood inquiry, uh, organisational development techniques, a whole host of things that I could bore you for hours on, but I'm not going to. Um, and the challenge is, is how are we going to connect all of these random assets, people and organisations, but people in the main, 
who care enough to act, who are capable and competent, how are we going to connect them all together? So one of the things um, we need to do here is to uh, recognise um, that to, to enable us to have that strong cohesive community, um, we need to form an association of associations or a team of teams. Um, so this is something which I uh, helped form in two of the neighbourhoods which I worked as as a neighbourhood inspector, starting to bring all of these community assets in line so that they are better connected with each other and they can work towards locally identified solutions and practices that are implemented by them. Um, so the current definition of community engagement from the College of Policing is the process of enabling citizens to be involved in policing at their chosen level. Uh, Paddy Tipping, the PCC for Nottinghamshire Police, um, talked about uh, this being um, achieving community cohesion through getting people involved in neighbourhood watch, speed watch, um, cadets, that sort of thing. But it's still enabling citizens to be involved in policing at their chosen level. One of the things that I think we can move towards now is flipping that definition on its head so that we can achieve this association of associations, which is the process of enabling the police to be involved in citizenship at the chosen level of community. You see the difference? We've replaced citizens with police, we've just switched it round. So community engagement in the future, and actually for a few forces now who are adopting this approach, is the process of enabling the police to be involved in citizenship at the chosen level of community. What this is doing is, is enabling those communities that really need it to become more cohesive places, to be happier places for people to be, where young people have got positive role models to look up to, as opposed to drug dealers and people involved in loan shark operations, organised crime syndicates, that sort of thing. It's the hardest police work I ever did, folks, it really is. But it's not a new idea, uh, because many of you know my favourite phrase from the Peelian Principles, that the uh, Robert Peel's principles that he set down in 1829, his vision for the police service, that the police are the public and the public are the police. Now, this line, this phrase goes on, you hear that often, it actually goes on to say that the police are the public and the public are the police, the police just being members of the public who are paid full time to carry out a role which is incumbent on all citizens in the interest of community welfare and existence. Listen to those last words, folks community welfare and existence. He didn't say in the interest of reducing crime, he didn't say in the interest of community safety, he said community welfare and existence. Let's flip back one page. Actually, let's flip back two. When we've got this patchwork quilt that's not very well connected in the community, um, I talk on my client only group about what this bit is, what this bit is and what this bit is. I haven't got time here though, folks, uh, but that's interesting stuff. Um, when we've got that, I don't think we've got community welfare in existence. When we've got this, the association of associations or a team of teams, very well connected community that's identifying its own solutions and practices that are going to help their community become a place where the welfare and existence is better, then we're going to have less crime. Actually, we're going to have less obesity, childhood obesity. We're going to have better educational achievement. We're going to have happier people. We're going to have fitter people. We're going to have people who achieve more, who are less likely to be unemployed, who are less likely to have unemployment issues, mental health issues, drug and alcohol uh, addiction issues. All of those things are cross-cut uh, the silos created by government at this moment in time, or actually government over the decades and hundreds of years. Uh, the police silo, the mental health silo, the education silo, actually all of it is just community welfare in existence. So Robert Peel, I doff my cap to you. What a visionary. In 1829, he had a vision for the service which we've still not achieved. We've still not achieved. So hopefully, um, many of you as my clients in the future will be able to take this sort of work forward. Uh, because this is where the demand is going to reduce. But it's ambitious. But as the proud principles for Nottinghamshire Constabulary say, um, and the D, doing things differently. We want to encourage people to do things differently, have new ideas, and challenge the status quo. So folks, challenge the status quo, um, deliver a police service for the future, but actually deliver the vision that Robert Peel had in 1829. So I hope you found this interesting folks. If you'd like to find out more, like I said, a bit of blurb below. Uh, so um, all I'll say now is goodbye from York and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye for now.